back in Colombia, but you cannot take the law into your own hands. Thanks for your advice. Arnold Schwarzenegger is a one-man army hunting down the terrorist who killed his family in collateral damage. One of five new movies we'll be reviewing this week. I'm Roger Ebert. And I'm Richard Roper. Collateral Damage was to be released last fall, but it was postponed because of its plot about a terrorist attack on American soil. Arnold Schwarzenegger plays Gordon Brewer, a Los Angeles firefighter whose wife and son are among the victims when a rebel leader known as El Lobo blows up the Colombian consulate. When a CIA agent played by Elias Coteas tells Gordon that El Lobo has fled the country and that the U.S. is trying now to negotiate peace with the rebels, Gordon takes matters into his own hands. Heinrich Beckman, Armstrong's replacement. Oh, yeah, 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 says you, buddy. Look, this is a serious breach of protocol, okay? I put in the papers, I crossed all my T's, and this is what I get? Come on, John Leguizamo is the cocaine plan operator who inadvertently leads Gordon to El Lobo. Now, after Gordon is captured, he and El Lobo have that you and I, we're cut from the same cloth conversation that antiheroes and villains have had in a hundred movies. Well, it seems we're both willing to... Uh for a cause. So what's the difference between you and I? The difference is I'm just gonna kill you. And that's Cliff Curtis mm -hmm. as El Lobo. And of course Gordon is suddenly infused with superhero fighting ability even though he used to be a fireman not a commando. <laughs> Collateral damage is from Andrew Davis, who directed The Fugitive. Davis has a strong sense of pace, and he knows how to stage action scenes that are loud enough and creative enough to drown out the story problem. The idea that a fireman from L.A. could infiltrate a Colombian terrorist camp on his own is a huge leap, even if that guy is Arnold Schwarzenegger. But I am recommending Collateral Damage as a slick thriller with a couple of neat plot twists and a return to form for the 50-something Arnold. I liked it, too. You know, this is a traditional Arnold Schwarzenegger thriller, mm -hmm. and I enjoyed it on that level, although I agree with you that an L.A. fireman could probably do what Arnold does in this movie if part of the fire department training consists of putting him through Delta Force training. Yeah, and obtaining passports illegally and knowing how to navigate the jungles just because he got a couple of neat maps and put them up in his uh, home office And I there. also love the way that he takes a, a symbolic prop like a fire axe and uses it to set up a booby trap at the end that is so complex... A physicist yeah. would have trouble figuring that out. And how come guys in the movies, they always have that ability when they throw an axe or a knife, it, oh. the, the handle never hits the oh, guy in the no. forehead and he goes, ah, you missed me. It Usually always you know, it would go like Doom. this. Yeah. But you know, it's an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. There's been some say. criticism of it because it seems to comment on events that are connected to 9-11. Mm. And I think, frankly, you can't blame a movie that was really finished shooting months and months no. ago for not knowing then what we know now. I think this may be the last movie like this about terrorism and it's kind of well it'll be the last movie about terrorism that doesn't have to I think directly comment yeah. on what happened in the real world yeah you can't I don't think you can penalize it for that it was smart of them to delay the release it was gonna come out right after the attacks and it stands on its own yes, as it an does. escapist action movie